Number five dimension of battle that we looked at is manipulation. Satan manipulates men so that they can have, they can create problems for themselves. Second Chronicles 21 verse 1, the Bible says Satan moved David to number Israel. It was against the law of God, but he was manipulated. You read your Bible, Genesis chapter 3 from verse 1 to 5. Satan manipulated Eve and she violated the ordinances of God. These are dimensions of battle. And I took time last week to show you what you need to do to overcome all of them. Please take time to listen to that message again. It will bless your life. And finally, I mentioned that Satan can weaponize your environment. The Bible said in Psalm 121 verse 6, the sun shall not smite you by day. That's not, prophet, that's not a prophetic verse. There are astrologers today who can use the moon to cast pear. Astrologers, they... <laughs> The, the constellation, they can manipulate the constellation to darken the possibility of a territory. That's why I was talking to you about atmospheres. When principalities are involved, you must be careful with atmospheres because they can, they can enslave creation. Did you not read your Bible? Romans 8.21, it says creation is in bondage. Anything created now because Jesus has not returned, Satan can manipulate it and use it as a weapon. It's a type of warfare. So you need to understand your own weapons in order to have advantage. And that's why we went to the third phase of our teaching last week and we outlined a few weapons that God has given to us to give us an advantage in battle. And I said number one is the whole armor of God. The Bible says to put on the whole armor of God wherewith you'll be able to withstand all the wires of the devil. So if you are not clothed with the whole armor of God, you have a problem. And remember, he didn't say the whole armor of God will be put on you. He said you put it on. That's how you use the weapon. And he told us about the helmet of salvation. So you need to understand the doctrine of salvation for yourself and let it be your consciousness. Because if you will stand tall in this kingdom, that helmet must be in place. He spoke about the belt of truth. You need to understand the truth of God's word and stand in the truth regardless of what Satan throws at you. He spoke about the breastplate of righteousness. You need to understand righteousness and understand it in context. You know, last week I was talking about <laughs> the meaning of righteousness and somebody got offended. Glory to God. I said, most times, we attempt to preach righteousness, but we end up preaching morality. And I stated it clearly that morality is not wrong. And I also stated that I preach it even here. In fact, if you are a revivalist, it will be impossible to preach without addressing morality. What is morality? It is adhering to certain values that are ethical values that meet ethical standards that's what morality is about but it's not only christians that advocate for morality there are many religions of the world that also advocate for morality so i said morality is good but it's not the gospel and somebody got offended that morality is the gospel i said no if morality is the gospel then every other religion of the world is preaching more is preaching the gospel because i can hardly point at any religion who does not advocate for morality I don't know anyone. But I said, morality is included in the message because it's the byproduct of righteousness. If you understand righteousness, you will live moral. But if you don't understand righteousness and you want to live moral, you will struggle. It's like baiting a pig and telling the pig to be neat. It's impossible. That's what the Old Testament saint tried for 1,500 years. They couldn't. Because you must be righteous before you live righteous. Is living righteous that is called morality. But righteousness itself is first of all a nature that was gifted you by God that gives you the right to stand in God's presence. So if you don't have the consciousness that you now have God's nature, 2 Corinthians 5.21, he made him that was without sin to become sin for us so that we might become, not have, become the righteousness of God. If you don't have the consciousness that now 
you have the nature of God. And if you don't have the consciousness that you didn't end this nature, it was given you. My son has my nature. He didn't end it. I gave him through biology. There's nothing he would have done to be like me. It was a gift to him. If you don't have this understanding that this is the nature of God gifted you and this gift gives you capacity to relate with God and on the strength of relating with God you can now live right and you just go ahead to live right you will struggle a thousand times. So righteousness is first of all about a nature before it is a lifestyle. So when you understand 2 Corinthians 5.21 understand Romans 5 17 then you now go to Ephesians 4 17 to 24 that now that you have the nature of God you can't live like the Gentiles so you need to have your mind renewed by the word of God and the renewer is coming to understand that you now have God's nature the renewer is coming to understand that you have the ability to stand in God's presence. The renewer is coming to understand that you now have authority over sin. When your mind is now renewed, then you go to 1 John 3, 7 and 10. That it is in doing righteousness that you manifest truly that you have the nature of God. Do you understand this? So, if you don't know this, you will not have the breastplate. That means your chest will be porous. Arrows can enter you. That's why somebody will stand somewhere and say, that person is a thief. And when they tell you, you are heartbroken. That's why demons can propagate things against you and you want to faint. For those of us who know we are righteous, when they speak against you, you say, who can bring any charge against God's elect? For it is God that judges. It is God that justifies. It is God that condemns. And on the strength of that, the arrows fall. They, they, they become useless. They can't affect you anymore. Meanwhile, all of the dynamics of spiritual warfare with men is around this subject. And I will show you from scripture a moment ago. But many can't succeed because they can't withstand arrows. Arrows. They shoot at them in church. They shoot at them in the market. They shoot at them in the office. And then they carry bitterness. They carry depression. And all of those things become too heavy. Brother, throw those things away. You are the righteousness of God. Nobody can bring any charge against you. There is a race set before you. You, can, you can't move forward unless you travel light. Speed is for those who are light. Go to the marathon. Go to the athletics and see. You don't wear better to run. No, no, no. You need skin tight. You need to be light to be able to run. And for some of us who are not just running but flying, there's no time to contemplate it. Because there are those who are walking, there are those who are running, but some of us, we are flying by the Spirit. We are flying. We are flying. You can't fly with weight. You cannot fly with weight. Ease yourself of those bodies. When they throw an arrow, let the breastplate of righteousness stop it. That's why I told you, you can't fight until you put on the whole armor of God. And then they said, have your feet shove with the boot, which is the readiness of the gospel. Come in the night, I'm ready. Come in the morning, I'm ready. See, people like us, they don't persuade us to go for evangelism. No. Necessity is laid upon us. People like us, they don't persuade us to give. No, we are sons in the kingdom. We advance the estate of our father. People like us, they don't beg us to pray for kingdom advancement. We live praying, we die praying. Because all our life, the breath that comes out of our spirit are the utterances and the invocations of the spirit. For out of their belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Rivers. It's called the readiness. The readiness. See, some of you are defeated because they need to send you an invitation letter before you go for evangelism. Some of you are defeated because they need to preach a message of prosperity before you give for kingdom advancement. Nobody should motivate you. If it's about kingdom, you know there is a move today on the internet, they say they are, they are deceiving men to give. It's an attack on the church that only the gullible will fall for. Have you known any brand in this world today that is not sponsored by billions? Do you think angels will come and preach on the street? You are listening to a message. Do you know what is put together for that message to reach you? As I'm talking to you now, there is a QLXD microphone. There are amplifiers at the back there. 
There are speakers. There are laptops transmitting it to the internet. There is a 200 kVA generator burning diesel every second. You think these things happen just like that? And we are preaching now to more than 30 nations right here, right now. How do you think it works? The gospel rides on the wings of the spirit, but it is carried by the, the, the resources that money can power. They say, cry out loud, my kingdom through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad. You allow people to deceive you. Oh, church is brainwashing you. See, there are fake people everywhere, but it doesn't stop us from doing the right thing. In the days of the apostles, the Bible says men sold their lands and brought the money to the apostles' feet so that kingdom can move forward. Are they thieves? There are criminals, but not everybody is a thief. Find out what they are doing and check your spirit. If there's a witness that this thing is about kingdom, please don't allow anybody to persuade you. Be at the forefront. Be at the forefront. Somebody did it so much, they called him son of consolation. The apostles, they nicknamed him. This one is son of consolation. Some people don't know why they are praying, but they are defeated. Because you, don't, you are not wearing boots. And when you enter the jungle, there are, there are spikes. There, those days when we were small, we used to call it chuku chuku. There are chuku chuku on the path. So you will match a lot of chuku chuku. And if you match it, <laughs> you will have injuries. If it's not treated quick, it will decay. So you can't move anymore. That's why your mates, you are seeing your mates go ahead of you say, why am I still here? You are here because you are not wearing boots. But from today, somebody will become equipped with the boot of the spirit. The readiness for advancing the gospel of peace.